بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين صلى الله وسلم وبارك على عبده ورسوله الأمين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه ومن اهتدى بهديه وسن بسنته إلى يوم الدين أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Allah the Almighty tells us in the Quran what translates to and among his signs is this that he created for you wives from among yourselves that you may found that you may find repose in them and he has put between you affection and mercy verily in that are indeed signs for a people who reflect by far marriage is one of the greatest blessings of Allah the Almighty upon the people and one of the greatest blessing in marriage to find the proper spouse the Prophet says alayhi salatu wasalam describing this blessing the world is transient comforts and the best of the comforts of this world is a righteous woman and this goes without saying about the husband as well so if a woman is fortunate in having a good man then this is paradise on the earth for women and likewise for a man to have a good and righteous and loving wife that would be his paradise on earth unfortunately this is not the case we all know that every woman knows that a husband can be hell and can be paradise and likewise a woman can be your nightmare and can also be your fantasy and I was requested to speak about ways and means of increasing love between the spouses but unfortunately I need someone to give me a similar uh, a class or or to teach me this because I was looking for this uh, for a long time but uh, uh, seriously when you want to reach this level of increasing the love between you and your wife or between you and your husband this is of course for women in this country everything is possible um, now I'm talking about the normalist Muslims to have this first of all you cannot reach this level of love and you cannot work on increasing it before going into the basics and that is knowing your rights and knowing the obligations and duties that you have to do unfortunately we all know our rights yet we seem to neglect our duties and obligations when you look at the rights and obligations of each party you would find that the obligations and the du and duties upon the woman are far greater than the duties and obligations upon the man towards his woman but the woman has more duties and obligations towards her husband why is that well there are many reasons and justifications the easiest to say is this is what Allah Azza wa decreed so we have to take it as it is but if you go into some depth you would find that a woman is instructed to focus on her husband and her family and this is the only thing she is supposed to do while the husband on the other hand has to focus on so many things among them is his wife and the family so if a woman takes care takes real good care of her husband this can be her gateway to paradise the Prophet tells us in an authentic hadith that when a woman prays her five mandatory prayers and fasts Ramadan and obeys her husband and fourthly preserves her chastity if she does these four things she will enter Allah's paradise very easy well while the man on the other hand has more than this the man has to financially provide his family his wife so he has to work the man has to attend five prayers a day in the masjid the man has to 
make zakat for the whole family, as in zakat al-fitr and else uh, uh, and other obligation, financial obligations. He has to. It's his duty to take care of his mother and father. The wife, once she's once she's married. She has only her family to obey and to look after. He has to give uh, uh, da'wah. He has to make amr ma'roof and nahi munkar. He has to make jihad. He has to mix with people. He has to be tolerant with people. While the woman is safe and sound and her husband, all what she has to cope up with is the nastiness of her husband. The Prophet ﷺ <clears throat> illustrates to us the importance of a husband and he says and the hadith is narrated by Mu'ad ibn Jabal Mu'ad ibn Jabal may Allah be pleased with him was the Prophet والسلام, messenger to Yemen so he was his messenger to many places when he went to Yemen he saw how the Christians glorify their kings and how they treat them in a very honorable and sort of respectful way to the extent that they prostrate to their kings when they greet them. So Mu'ad, when he came back to Medina, the first thing he did, he prostrated to the Prophet ﷺ, thinking that this is good. And the Prophet ﷺ immediately made him stand up and said, what is this Mu'ad? If I were to order someone to prostrate to someone, I would have ordered a woman to prostrate to her husband. So even the Prophet ﷺ would not allow this to himself, Yet he said, had I ordered anyone to do this, I would have instructed the woman to prostrate to her husband, to make sujood to her husband. Why? Just to show us how important the status of a husband should be. The Prophet ﷺ also forbade a woman from fasting without the permission of her husband. And this is in a sort, yeah, he shows you how huge the responsibility that lies on a woman's shoulders towards her husband she is not allowed to fast voluntary fasting while he's in her house why because he may request or need something of her that she could not fulfill while she's fasting okay he could tell me later on he i can break my fasting no you have to ask or seek his permission before you fast Okay, fasting for Allah. Yes, Allah knows this. But the, the husband's duty in this issue is more and prior to Allah's duty. So if it's not mandatory fasting, such as Ramadan, makeup of Ramadan, it falls under Ramadan. What, what, what kind of fasting, uh, mandatory fasting there, there is? Ramadan. That's all. Expiations. Expiations are mandatory. If someone makes nether, vows, also it's mandatory. So if she wants to do this, she does not have to ask him for permission. But if she fasts every Monday and Thursday, the white days, if she fight, fasts a day and skips a day, she has to seek his, permi her, his permission. Otherwise, Allah would not be uh, pleased with her. The Prophet ﷺ saw so one of the women in Medina and he asked her about this man and she said, he's my husband. So he said, how are you with him? She said, oh, Prophet of Allah, I try my level best to be his obedient and uh, a loving wife. So the Prophet ﷺ, as if he was not convinced or he was convinced, but he wanted to reiterate this point again and again and again. So he said, well, do whatever you, you, you wish and please, because he is your Jannah and he's your Nar. He's your paradise if you please him and if you're obedient to him and if he's happy with you and he's your hell on the day of judgment because by not doing this to him, Allah will put you into hell because of that. Now women are not liking this. They're looking at the floor, floor and playing with the carpets and looking at each other. Why is this? Why did we come? Well, this is that our religion. See, I, someone will say, but, but this is not fair. Astaghfirullah. This is Allah's ruling, it's not ours. Okay, it's in our favor. But we all have daughters, we all have mothers, we all have sisters. So I will not be happy just because my wife, she has all this load on her shoulders. At the same time, I have to accept the same load to be on my daughters, on my mother, and on my sisters. 
This is Allah's religion. And it's a test. Allah tests everyone exactly like he is supposed to be tested. <laughs> yani, I heard this personally from many men envying women, saying, well, you're lucky. You sit home doing nothing. You wake up at 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, some wake at a dhuhr. All what you have to do is just take something from the fridge, put it in the microwave. It's lunch, alhamdulillah. When your husband comes, you just smile with him for five minutes. Then he is on the internet. He leaves you alone for the rest of the day. You don't have to do anything. We men do every single thing. And women say the same to men. You're out driving your car. You're with your friends in the office. You go shopping. You see a lot of things. You do this. You do that. What we cornered in, uh, we, we, we're stuck between four walls and no one is ever happy if you go to a peasant he would say ah oh, i wish i had a big castle i wish i had a big house i wish i had lots of cars i wish i had servants to serve me i wish i had this i wish i had that while the rich man says i wish i was poor i wouldn't have to pay an ex extravagant uh, electricity bill with the uh, uh, the heating, with the cars, with the maintenance, with the taxes, with this, with that, and I'm afraid that people will jump on my house to steal my stuff. I will do this. I wish I was poor. Nobody is happy, Subhanallah, except those who are believers, who follow the Quran and Sunnah. What, no matter what happens to them, they will say Alhamdulillah and they're satisfied. Ya khi, your your son just died, so. Alhamdulillah, Allah chose this for me, and I know that He will intercede for me on the day of judgment. He will He will pull me by my hand to paradise. But He is your son. If He did if He didn't die when He's five years old, He's gonna die ninety-five years old. At the end, the result is death. He's dead. So a believer is always happy, no matter what happens. He's always content, and that is why he's never angry. He's never under pressure. He's always, you know. Uh, 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 chilling out. Um, there is a beautiful hadith where Jibreel himself descended from the seventh heaven, went to the Prophet والسلام, and he told him, Say salamu alaykum to Khadija because she can't see him, and tell her that Allah Azza wa gives her the glad tidings of a house, of a castle, of a fortress in paradise made of pearl. It's a big pearl for her. And in it, there is no tiresome, nobody would be tired, and there is no sakhab. Sakhab is a lot of noise. So scholars thought about this. And why? Why Khadija? This house, okay, all prophets' wives will get houses, definitely. But why these two characteristics in this house? That she will not be tired in it, and she will not hear noise and, and, and chaos and, and shouting. Scholars say because she did exactly the same for the, for the Prophet ﷺ. When he entered the home, he would, she would not let him lift a, 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 a thing. She would do everything for him. And when the kids wanted things, when they wanted to shout, when they wanted to play, she, was, she used to hush them. She would not nag him. She would not request things of him. She would not tell him, okay, we need some bread. Go get this. Go get that. We, we need to change the furniture. Why don't you paint the house? Why don't you go and fix the sink? Why don't you do this and that? No. She would not burden him. He's in the house. He's in his kingdom. And this reward is in accordance to what she had done in this dunya. Okay, what about the rights of women? These are the rights of men. Okay, now women say, okay, we, are, we get the picture. We get the picture. We have to put our men on a silver plate. Silver plates are not permissible for you to use. Use porcelain or glass or plastic even. Just put him on a plate. Let him comfortable. What are the rights of women then? The rights of women are mentioned in this hadith. But when you contemplate on this hadith, these are not the rights of the women. The Prophet says, alayhi salatu salam, when he was approached by one of his companions, and he said, what are, what, is, what, what does, my wife have rights over me. So the Prophet says والسلام, that you should feed her as you feed yourself and clothe her as you clothe yourself that you should not say to her may Allah make your face ugly and that you should not beat her. Authentic hadith. Men say that's all. That's cool. I'll bring her an apple every day. 
I'm feeding her and I'll get her one dress every year this is more than enough but she doesn't have to change like wardrobe uh, full of, of dresses and I will not say may Allah make your face ugly it's ugly already <laughs> no, no I, I will not uh, say anything to her I will not even speak to her women came a lot of women come to me and complain our husbands stay like a week or two without even saying salamu alaikum he just entered the house eats sleeps goes out to his kids comes at night sleeps and that's it as if I am a robot or, 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 or a maid in the house and the man says yes I did not say anything the Prophet said do not say may Allah make your face ugly I didn't tell us that's more than enough and you don't beat her beat her she's six four she'll crush me to death <laughs> what are you talking about no well these are not her rights these are the minimum of rights that one should have to his uh, uh, wife but is that all no Allah Azza wa Jal tells us in the Holy Quran uh, and they that is women have rights over their husbands as regards of living expenses similar to those of their husbands over them as regards of obedience and, and respect to what is reasonable so all of this has to be within al-ma'roof it should not you, 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 she has to obey you but you can't you know say Simon says stand on your left foot for six hours and she says I have to obey him no this is not which is reasonable this is not ma'roof you cannot tell her well I, today I'm angry with you don't sit the whole day just keep on standing it's, you don't obey me Allah will take you to, to, to hellfire no this is not uh, not what is meant by uh, obedience this is uh, 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 dicto dictatorship so Allah tells us that we have an edge over women but this edge is obedience and we support them we have to provide for them this is the edge and the Prophet ﷺ said the best among you men are the best to their wives so you want to see if someone is a real practicing Muslim ask his wife and I've seen a lot and a lot of people who pretend to be practicing and their wives call me by phone Wallahi and they say oh Shaykh mashallah my husband is a nice man and he goes to the masjid he attends circles he travels uh, to different cities to attend seminars and he is participating in da'wah he hands out leaflets mashallah he does this and does that I said, mashallah your husband is one of the companions of the Prophet ﷺ. She says, no, this is the bright side. And then she goes telling me the list of the bad things he does. And then you, you, you don't know, if, is this Dr. Jekyll or Mr. Hyde? It's a split personality. With the people, mashallah, he's excellent. But with his wife, he is as bad as he can be. Astaghfirullah. And the Prophet tells us, the best among you is the best too his friends or his family his wife how can you be so humorous and happy and giggly when you're around your friends with the minute you enter the, the, the house khalas mashallah welcome to the dark side of the force the guy is is, is, is is completely transformed why is that what did they do bad for you uh, 17 years ago she said something disrespectful what was it I forgot but <laughs> Who cares? It was disrespectful. This is this is not the dealing of the Prophet ﷺ at all. You have to support your wife. The Prophet says, feed her when you feed. So, Sheikh, I ate like uh, two cheeseburgers every every meal when people allow me. If they don't take that cheeseburger off me, but does this mean whenever I take two cheeseburgers, I have to give her two cheeseburgers as well? No, no. That means that she has to also have a full stomach. And uh, Sheikh, Sheikh, I buy like three suits, uh, Armani's and five suits of this and uh, my uh, Nike uh, trainers and so on. Do I have to buy the same? No. It means that you have to provide her with the minimum clothing acceptable in her environment. You did not take her from uh, 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 a poor place. You took her from her, from her father's house. If you can afford it, give her the same standard as she used to enjoy <laughs> while she was at her father's house. What about if she's rich? Lucky you. No, 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 no. Don't think that. Even if she's rich, she's not supposed to put one penny of her income of, or of her savings to you. 
Yes, yes, Sheikh, but she has a lot of money or she works. At least we should share in, in, in the house. No, it's not her responsibility. You are, allow her to work, Jazakallah khair. You don't want her to work, she has to sit in the house and you have to provide for her, but she is not obliged to uh, uh, spend one penny on herself, on the children or on the house. And spending on the house is a great deed that Allah rewards. You know that if you spend, if you provide for your for your family, yani some people pay with, you know, their hearts are torn with every penny they get out. It's painful. You can feel him, you know, suffering. Why? She said, yeah, I'm, I'm paying the electricity bill. Who's enjoying the electricity? Who's using it? Yeah, yeah but the family is big. So it, it hurts him. Well, if you think of the great reward, the Prophet ﷺ, in the hadith of Ka'b ibn Ujra, a man who was so agile and active passed by the Prophet ﷺ and his companions. And he was, you know, you, you find some people like this, so energetic. They move from one place to the other. They help, they do this. They're always active. Some people like me just sit in one place, you know, maybe sleep for an hour or two before moving. No, there are people, mashallah, that are energetic. So the companions like this man. And they said, mashallah, Prophet of Allah, if this agility and energy was in the cause of Allah, it would have been great. This is their thinking. This agility, this power, this energy should be directed in the cause of Allah. What did the Prophet say He did not say Ameen. He said, well, if this agility was running to provide for his children and family, it is in this in Sabilillah. It is in the cause of Allah. So I work eight hours a day in the morning and this in the Sabilillah. Yes, I'm, I'm, I want to put bread on the table, food on the table. Who's going to provide us? So if I go to work in the morning with this attitude, then my work would be fun. Because what I'm doing, I'm doing it for the sake of Allah Azza wa Jal. Then the Prophet says, and if he, his power and agility and energy is to provide for two old parents of his, then it is in Sabilillah. I know people, Wallah, I know people that wish their parents die yesterday than today. Not today than tomorrow. They want, they, they, they're fed up of them. Why? Ya yeah, Sheikh, my mother keeps on nagging. If I don't call her every month, once every month, she's always, why you're not calling me? Call, you're calling your mom once a, 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 a month? I said, yeah, yeah, she lives far away. She lives like 15 minutes away in, 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 in Bradford. So I, I can't, I can't live like this. She's, she's, I have so many things to do. I see my mother every single day between Maghrib and Isha. And I still feel that I'm not doing her justice. By Allah, if your mother just raises her hands and said, may Allah open the doors of mercy and provision for my son, Allah will answer her. And everything that I'm enjoying at the moment is because of her uh, grace of Allah, of course, first of all, but, but, but after that, with the dua of your mother. You know what happened to Juraj, we said this last year, the, 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 the worshiper, when his mother uh, uh, supplicated against him. So people are like this, they want their parents to die. Are these believers? No. If they had the good intention of working nine to five to provide for their elders, for, for their parents, they are in Sabilillah, they are in Jihad, the Prophet tells us, salam. and if he is working, not for anyone except for himself so that he would not beg so that he would not live on welfare or he would not live on in uh, people's donations he's working with his arm he's washing windows he's doing this he's doing that just so that no one would give him sadaqa he is in sabilillah but if he's out to boast and show off he's working for this reason then this is in the cause of shaitan so Think again, when you spend to uh, uh, spend money and, uh, to your family, you are in indeed doing something that is righteous and good. Now, how much time do you have? 25 minutes. Not very funny. There are things that increase the love between the spouses. And each one needs at least 25 minutes, but we will wrap it up. This was compiled by my daughter. May Allah bless her and, and give her reward. Say Ameen.
this is not for me, so I can do this for my daughter. And uh, she, Jazahallah Khair, took the time and she wrote these points to me. I edited and, and, and added it because I told her, daughter, you know how I am with your mother. I'm a very bad husband. So I need someone to give me something. And I found lots of things in it that are beneficial for me. And I applied it myself. And it works. You know, women are so kind and, 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 and uh, how, do you call, uh, how do you call the other word for kind? No, no, no. Merciful, tayyib. Uh, anyhow, you know, you have the words, mashallah. They get angry so quickly, but they are pleased quicker than that. One word, one nice word would make them pleased. <coughs> Do we have the ability to take the initiative and say this word? No, we're men. Men are never apologetic. We break windows, we break plates, we harm people, but we never apologize for what we do. Among the things that increase love, and you should uh, uh, try this, you have to accept your spouse for what they are. Accept them as they are. You cannot change people. You do not have the ability to change people. And the biggest example or the biggest proof is that you can't cha even change yourself. And you want people to change, you first do the changing, and then you will find people uh, uh, able to change. The Prophet والسلام, says in a beautiful hadith, and this hadith I always say to people when they're having conflicts with each other, not only husband and wife, but even relatives, friends, neighbors. The Prophet says, والسلام, no believing man should hate a believing woman. If he dislikes one of her characteristics, he will be pleased with, the, uh, with another. It's a matter of balance. A sister just called me just 10 minutes before I came here from Saudi Arabia. And she didn't know that it was an international call. And I, well, as she was talking, I was sweating. Mm -hmm. And it took about 20 to 25 minutes, a phone call. She's just, mashallah, like the energizer bunny. She, talking, talking, talking without nonstop. Talking, crying, crying and talking. Of what? Of her husband. She's saying everything that is bad about him. He doesn't spend time with us. He's always at work from nine o'clock in the morning until 11 o'clock at night. Work, 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 nothing but work. He never spends quality time. He never takes me out. He never sits with me. I would like to drink a cup of tea. And she kept on talking, mashallah, illa billah. I was envious. But then I asked her one question. <coughs> Is he that bad? She said, no, 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 he is a very nice person. He's very generous. He's kind-hearted. He's like, wallahi, he's miskin, ya sheikh. She now sympathizing. She's, he is miskin. He's a poor man. As if she's confessing that I'm giving him help. So this is, and I told her, subhanallah, couldn't you find any excuse for him? Who is he working for? And I told her that so many women are calling me, telling me that their husband, does not have a, have work and they're supporting him and they're complaining and i have other women calling me telling me that their husbands prevent them from going out of the house to visit their parents except once a month and they live in the same neighborhood the husband say no you don't go out and this woman's husband is telling her listen go to your parents go to your friends go to your relatives enjoy yourself she says no no i want him and him alone so one of the greatest things that would increase your love to your spouse is to turn a blind eye, look in the other direction. If you see something that is awful, always look at the bright side. I, I don't know if I can say this or not. I know someone who does this. He says that whenever his wife cooks food, it's always burnt or too much salt, or uneatable, not good for human consumption. <laughs> and he says, I come from the house, from, from my work to my house, you know, shattered, beaten, tired, just, you know, I want a good meal. And I sit down and I find this food and I take a bite and I find it from the first taste that it's, it's, it's not good. As if it's talking to me, don't eat me. And I take two or three more bites. And I drink water and say, Alhamdulillah, may Allah Azza wa Jal uh, reward you for the food. It was beautiful. And my wife 
while I'm eating, she's looking at me from under the table. And uh, when I finish and I say this, she says, liar. <laughs> I said, why, what? I said, why do you lie to me? The food is awful. I cannot even eat it. She said, what, what do you want me to do? She said, do something. Subhanallah. Shout, scream, curse. Do something. The food is uneatable. Un uneatable. Why do you eat it? And he tells me that. He tells her, listen, my love. I don't, I don't take you out. And I know that you know your relatives take, the, their husbands take them out. I never take you to a restaurant for uh, uh, food. I never bring you flowers. I never buy you anything. I am always at my uh, uh, gatherings or for da'wah or lectures. I'm always out of the house. And you're doing a great job. And you never complain. Do I dare and complain about food or about dirty laundry or about the, the house is, is messed up? You're tolerating me. The least I could do is to accept you and appreciate what you're doing for me. The food is like this, though you spent two hours in the kitchen. They've been married for 25 years. The poor thing. His skin has this. Um, uh, she spent two hours, and this is the best she could do. So if you accept and tolerate the mistakes of your spouse, your life would be beautiful. This is يعني, uh, the golden rule. Unfortunately, we're not like this. It's not us only. Umar ibn al-Khattab, may Allah be pleased with him. The story tells us, Yarhamukumullah. The story tells us that a man said, I went to the house of the Khalifa, Umar ibn al-Khattab, to complain of the rudeness and harshness of my wife's character. My wife is, 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 is killing me. So I said, where should I go? Marriage counseling. The best one is Umar. At least maybe he may chop her head off or do something for her. So the guy went, goes there, and as he knocks the door and someone says, who is it? He says, uh, my name is so-and-so. I'd like to see the Khalifa. And he waits for permission to enter. He hears Umar's wife shouting at him. And Umar is saying, yes, honey, yes, dear. And she's saying, you did this, you did that, you did this, you did that. Nag, 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 nag. And Umar, you know, the fierce Umar. May Allah be pleased with him. He's, okay, yes. The guy at the door said, uh, I, nah. It's not good. He left. As he left, Omar came to, to attend the, the guest and he found him, you know, giving him his back and walking. He said, hey, come, come. What's happening? He said, it's okay, Khalifa, prince of the believers. I came to you to solve my problem, but I found you have a bigger problem than mine. <laughs> he said, listen, my, hey, listen, my son, my brother, I tolerate her because she has rights over me. She cooks my food. She bakes my bread. She cleans my thoves, my, my, my clothes. And she feeds my children. And all of this is not mandatory upon her. It's not an obligation. She's doing this as part of obeying me bil ma'roof, when it's reasonable. And with all of this, my heart tends to be soft towards her because she's my wife. I love her. So... Uh, and, and, and also, she distracts me from looking into haram because she's my lawful wife. And that is why I tolerate her uh, uh, behavior. And the man said, then what should I do? Yeah, I, she, my wife is like this as well. So what should I do to tolerate her? He told him, my brother, life is short. And by Allah, life is short. And if you look back, and some of the brothers, when, when he heard this hadith, I, I told him that life is short. He said, by Allah, life is short. Whenever I wake up in the morning, I look at my wife's uh, face. Oh, I said, it's been 35 years with her. How did, I, how, did, how did I tolerate this? But then I say that this is a blessing of Allah. And apparently, this is what a lot of men say. And I hear this. They come and complain, Sheikh, Wallah, if you see my wife, Wallah, you'll be shocked to death. And I say, apparently, brother, you did not look in the mirror recently. Because that is exactly what her remark would be about you. So it's a, you know, it, it takes two to tango, as they say. It's a, it's a touche. No, as you see the flaws and the shortcomings of people, always look at yourself and appreciate those who are tolerating with you. Number two, among the things that would increase in your love to each other that you do not criticize. Leave criticism away. And... It is human nature. Do you like people criticizing you? 
Nobody that likes this. <coughs> Nobody likes you. Uh, likes uh, your wife definitely is not doing a favor to you when she criticizes your driving. <coughs> you could be driving. She could be, you know, all all the time. What are you doing? Don't do this. Don't do, watch out the car. And you don't like this, although she's saying something that is true. Ahmed ibn Hanbal tells us that I married my wife for tw 20 years. And we agreed not to criticize each other. And 20 years we did not have a dispute in our lives. 20 years without having a dispute. I know people, friend, a friend of mine, who is married for more than 20 years. He said, by Allah, I was never ever angry with my wife. Never. When she is angry, I, I leave her to cool down. Five, ten minutes, she comes and kisses my foot in appreciation for my behavior. And when I'm angry, she is trying her best to please me and, and apologizes. And then I come and kiss her forehead. Maybe because she's shorter, I don't know. <laughs> Anyhow, so this is, this is the, the, the trend. This is how you get love into your life. Third thing that increases love, consultation. <coughs> you have to consult your wife and she has to consult you. The worst thing in a wife life is negligence. When you neglect her, when you don't take her opinion, when you do things. I, 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 I get phone calls from women complaining that my husband changed the living room. He bought a beautiful set of furniture and the colors and the paintings and the new LCD and so on. So I said, you should be grateful. He said, no, he did not even ask me about my taste. And it's completely wrong. And who lives more in that living room? It's her. So this is bad. Whenever you do something, make them feel that they're part of the family. If you want to travel on a vacation, for example, you want to take a week off quality time, you want to go somewhere for sightseeing, it would add a lot of value to gather the children with the wife, where do you want to go? And you, with your wisdom and diplomacy, you can drive them to the place you want. Giving the, the, the financial status, giving the time, giving the weather, giving the kada. After a while, they tell you, okay, we want, we'd like to go the, to this place. And they say, mashallah, you gave me an excellent idea. The impact on them, because you consulted them, is, is great because it gives them trust. And whenever you trust someone, they, they love you. And likewise for the husband. Of course, we are not consulted usually because we are the one who are, is paying the money. So they have to take our permission. But it is us men who need to consult their wives. This is what the Prophet did, alayhi And his wives would give him advice. As in, in, in the Battle of uh, Hudaybiyah, the, the, the Treaty of Hudaybiyah. When he signed the treaty, he went to the companions and said, Okay, now you have to shave and slaughter your sacrifice and let's go back to Medina. And nobody did what he uh, instructed them to do. And the Prophet was angry at some. He went back to Um Salama. He said, didn't you see what your people did? They, they didn't uh, obey me. So Um Salama told him, should I tell you something that if you do, they would obey you? Go outside and you shave your head and you sacrifice your, uh, uh, your uh, camel, camels and see what they do. The minute the Prophet did this, السلام, they jumped on each other shaving each others in, in compliance with his instruction because they saw the prophets doing it there is no return and this was because of the advice of this wise woman um salama may allah be pleased with her uh, fourthly you have to show your affection without any reservations show your love to your spouse express it and this is this was one of the complaints of the sister i just Yani, I should have written her, her complaints because that would have been another lecture. She is saying that no matter what I do, he never talks. He never expresses his feelings. I tell him I want to hear the word I love you. Thank you, my darling. Thank you, honey. Nothing. He never says anything of this sort at all. The only time I, I hear this is when I tell him about his coffee. He says, sugar. Zakallah khair, honey. I love you too. That's the only time I hear something sweet from him is when he's requesting sugar. So you have to express your feeling to your wife and she has to do the same to you. One says, yeah, Sheikh, she knows this. I've been with her for 40 years. What else do you want me to, to say to her? No, it is important 
to say this. The Prophet used to say this السلام, to his wife, Aisha. And he would show this to everyone else. He would not keep it as a secret. Abdullah ibn, uh, Amr ibn As, Amr ibn As, may Allah be pleased with him, comes to the Prophet والسلام, and says, O Prophet of Allah, who among the people you love most? He says, Aisha. He doesn't have any reservation in saying this. Some of us have reservations in, 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 in naming his wife. Well, where are you going? I'm going to pick the missus. Uh, Mrs. who? The missus, you know, um, 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 um uh, Abdullah. Oh, your wife. Yes, yes, um, Abdullah. Uh, what's the name? Um, Abdullah, the daughter of so-and-so. The Prophet would find it easy and, and normal to, to name his wife, his daughters. Ya Fatima, Ya Khadija. It's, it's normal. So you have to express your feelings. And she would express her feelings towards him and tells him that I know that you love me most. And there's nothing to hide in this, of course. He would not go to one of the other wives and say, you know that Aisha is number one, you guys are number two, number three, number four. No, but he would show everybody else that he loves her. To the extent that he would probably, and she says, when eating with the Prophet ﷺ, if she eats a piece of meat, he would take this meat and looks at the traces of her bite and bite from it. And if he, she drinks from a cup, he would go and put his lips where she had put her lips on that cup. This is beautiful love. It's like we do every day in our houses. When our wives gives us, they give us the, the spoon they had eaten with. And, and what is this? It's, it's dirty. Go wash it. Bring me something. <laughs> yeah, she said, I, I ate from it. She said, I know. What is this? this Where's the hygiene? You crazy? You, 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 it's all over you. This is wrong. A real husband, a real loving Muslim would enjoy eating the, with the same spoon, would enjoy eating in the same plate, would enjoy drinking from the same cup as show of his love to his uh, wife. Uh, number five, among the things that uh, increases love is playing. When was the last time you played uh, I wouldn't say Monopoly, it has dice. Uh, played anything, yani, that is yani, uh, Scrabble. You were in England, do as English do. When was the last time you played Scrabble with your, your wife? When was the last time you went outdoors and played badminton, for example, together, or played the football, or played rugby? That's a good game. <laughs> you know? You can, yeah. That would be, it was fun. Why would I do this, one says? What happens if I see Sheikh uh, Al Albani uh, playing with his wife? Ah, what a disgrace. No, it's not. The Prophet used to do it, Aisha. He not did, did not do it once, he did it twice. Um, when Aisha, Mother Aisha says that in one of the battles, one of the journeys with the Prophet, the Prophet told Aisha, the army to go and uh, uh, advance. <coughs> and when I, uh, uh, him and, and her were left behind, he said, How about we race? She said, Yeah, I'll take you. <laughs> So she raced with the Prophet and she said, I was young and light, so, so I won the race. And a few years later, the Prophet did not forget this. And in another journey, he told the army to advance, but she said, I gained weight. After four or five years, I gained, you know, khalas. You know, people when they marry, they tend to get weight, uh, to, to, to gain weight. So she said, yeah, I'll take you. And they raced and the Prophet won the race and he said to shake this one for that one now we're even what kind of a prophet is he he's the perfect human being playing with his wife a lot of the men nowadays oh shameful playing with your wife <laughs> what is this a kid or something you're a teenager the prophet was about 55 years old when he raised her 55 years old no handicap, no back ache, no, I cannot walk. I, no, 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 the Prophet was the strongest of men, alayhi salatu wasalam. So this is something for you to do now. But you have to take it gradually. Don't go to your wife and say, let's go and race. <laughs> this guy's crazy. All of a sudden you come back from a lecture, let's play, come on. Where's the back man? where's the monopoly? Come on, come on, let's play. No, you have to take it gradually, express your love, express your feelings. Then she says, you gonna marry again? Say it, split it out, you wanna do this? You have to show your love, unconditional love. Uh, the sixth thing, you can play together, 
but also there is something that is more honorable and that is to worship Allah together the Prophet ﷺ used to wake his wife Aisha and all the other wives and they used to pray night prayer together so it's not only the dunya that we're together it's not the fun it's not uh, 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 the emotion and love that binds us also the love of Allah that is why the Prophet says salam, may Allah have mercy on a man who wakes up in the middle of the night wakes up his wife to pray with him and if she refuses he sprinkles water to her face so that she wakes up and prays with him not a bucket huh? a wa sprinkles water and she does the same for him and they pray two rakahs if a man and a woman pray two rakah a night Allah will write them in the preserved tablet as الذاكرين الله كثيرا والذاكرات that those who remember Allah a lot from the women and from the men by only praying two rakahs how, how long would it take you? a couple of minutes but if you continue to do this the relationship, the love among you would grow because it's not only for money for sheltering, for uh, clothing no, it's for the sake of Allah the Almighty uh, number seven, giving gifts. And the hadith, tahadu tahabu. Not only for the spouses. The more you give gifts to people, they will, they will be enslaved for your favor. They will be thankful. They will be grateful. So even if you have an enemy, give him a gift. He will become a friend. And you have to give your wife every now and then a gift. And she, if she is uh, uh, able to afford it, she has to also give you a gift every now and then. And then, bearing in mind that these gifts are not associated to wrong occasions. So why are you giving your wife this on the 14th of Feb? Is it 14th of Feb? Valentine's Day? Is it 14th or? Okay, my memory still is okay. So, I said Valentine's Day, Sheikh. Uh, it has to be, you know, uh, uh, wrapped in red. And it's, it's an anonymous uh, sender. No, no, this is haram. Okay, can I do it in our anniversary? So again, it's haram. Why can we, uh, cannot ce celebrate this? No. These are all un-Islamic. And as Muslims, we do not celebrate our marriage once a, a, a year. Every single day, every single night is a celebration. So I give her, not on her birthday, because this is again is haram. I give her any other time that to, to show uh, my love to her. Number eight, we still have five minutes. I'll, I'll just go through it uh, quickly inshallah uh, cooperation in the house so the Prophet ﷺ was described by Umm Aisha mother, mother Aisha may Allah be pleased with her when she was asked how was he in his house in her home when he was home how was he like she said he was a human being like any human being he used to clean his clothes milk his sheep and serve himself Whenever I go to, through this hadith, serve himself, I try to remember when was it the last time I went to the kitchen and got a glass of water. I can't remember. Honey, uh, a glass of water. She's sitting next to me. What am I? What's wrong with me? Why don't I go? No, no, why, why did I marry her? Go and get me this. Go get me that. Go get me this. Go get me that. This is what I do. And this is wrong. You have to cooperate with your uh, uh, wife. I know a lot of good brothers, mashallah. They cook, and they're excellent cook. I've, I've tried their, their, their uh, cooking, mashallah. I know brothers that wash the dishes once or twice a week. I know brothers that do not want to burden their wives. They take the, the clothes and they take it to the laundry, get to, to, to be washed and pressed. Why? See, alhamdulillah, I have money. And I don't want to burden my wife. It, it, it takes a lot of time and, and effort from her side. So the more you do in the house, the more man you are. One says, no, oh, washing the dishes, putting the apron on, and, and singing while doing that? Come on, Sheikh. What is this? I'm a student of knowledge. Haram. This is not. No, it's not. The, mo the more you do this, the more a man you are. You become. Not only in the eyes of your wife, but in the eyes of yourself. Because this humbleness is part of the Prophet's characteristic. Uh, number nine, avoid selfishness and this is very important we men by nature are selfish we're selfish we love ourselves we love our property we love our cars we love our wallets we love our money we love 
these these are mine so many times i've seen brothers you know when they're served food and one of the children you know a child just goes to pick take something just, hit someone why why so this is my food <laughs> this is your son so this is my food i'll give him whatever he, nobody touches my plate no this is this is not cool you have to be tolerant you have to be giving you don't you must not be selfish uh, selfish having said that our target as a spouse should be to please my spouse and if i do and if i make this my target life would be beautiful because i'm not waiting for something in return and this is one of the points that needs more explanation but i'll, I'll just wrap it up you have to give without waiting for return the most of the problems that come to me come to me be, from people who are generous and giving but and underline the but queen victoria used to say but me no but whenever someone wants to you know object but said, no buts the problem is that people who give a lot usually exp expect people to give them in return and when they don't hell breaks loose Ya Allah, that beautiful, kind, tolerant, giving, and generous woman turns into a lioness. Uh, what is a lioness? A lioness is called? The wife of a lion? I just made that up. Anyhow, she turns into a vicious monster, killing it. Why? She says, I gave, nobody gave me in return. Don't give, Habibi. Please, don't give. Do not give and do not retaliate in such a fashion or give without ex expecting anything in return and those who give without expecting anything in return are the richest people on earth because they are so at peace with themselves and with others they just keep on giving and people around them maybe 10 15 would abuse this generosity but you will find five or three or even one giving in return and the person would be grateful because somebody gave him something in return. But when you give generously to everyone, everyone gives back in return and one only does not, you feel miserable. Why didn't he give me? Yeah, he, all of those gave you. Yeah, yeah, but I'm expecting every single one. I have a, a, a record book to, to write down everything I did. Give without expecting anything in return. And uh, finally, there are things that you should do when you have dispute with your spouse. First thing, communication. And the most, the most of the problems that come to me are because of lack of communication. I think something about you, I don't talk. It builds up my memory, my imagination, my shaitan comes and puts fuel to the fire. You think also something against me and the gap widens until it's no return. Khalas, divorce is imminent. Um, be able to forgive and forget don't live in the past something that happened and hurt you throw it in behind you Khalas, forget it it's gone don't live uh, in the ruins because only the only person would would be harmed by this is you and try to be the first to apologize it's not a shame it's not uh, um, reducing your manhood to apologize when you do a mistake. The Prophet ﷺ tells us about the characteristics of the people of Jannah. He said, among the men, the Prophets are in Jannah, Siddiq are in Jannah, the righteous are in Jannah, the martyrs are in Jannah, those who uh, go and visit their brothers in Allah, not their uh, siblings, their brother in Allah, in a different city, only for the sake of Allah, are in Jannah. MashaAllah. Okay, what about women? The Prophet said, the women of Jannah are Al-Walud, Al-Wadud, Al-A'ud. Al-Walud is the one who gives birth to children. I meet brothers in the 30s, 40s, 50s, MashaAllah, how many children do you have? Said one, why is that? Your line of production is very bad. Was one, one of the brothers I met from the, the speakers, I spoke to him, mashallah, he's my age. 
How many uh, uh, children do you have? This is 15. MashaAllah, tabarakallah. One of the shuyukh known as Mustafa al-Adawi, one of the hadith shuyukh, Egyptian guy, he's, he's very famous in, in Egypt and elsewhere. He's, yani, mashallah, uh, a, a good sheikh. He has 20. Yani, two football teams. Wow, that's a lot. That's good. So the Prophet says, the women of paradise, their characteristics uh, uh, are, one, they give birth to a lot of children. Two, they are kind, wadud, they are kind to their husbands. Four, aud, they benefit their husband. And finally, and the fourth one is that whenever her husband does her injustice, who's the aggressor? The husband. Whenever the husband does her in injustice, he, she takes his hand and she says, by Allah, I would not sleep until you forgive me and you're, you're, you're pleased with me. He's the aggressor. But the Prophet tells us that the women of paradise are like this. So if she's doing this when she's the one who is oppressed, then how would she be when she's pleased and, and at good terms with her husband? And the list goes on, but I'm afraid that this is all the time uh, we have. I pray to Allah Azza wa Jal that we benefit from this and we use these points to practice them and implement them in our lives. And not only this, but to teach our daughters as well. Because our daughters are tomorrow's wives. So we have to teach our, our, our daughters the rights of their, our husbands over them. And we have to teach our, uh, uh, our children, our boys, the rights of their wives over them so that when they get married, they are already prepared.